Traditionally, I have done a video every three months or so as a most anticipated list for every upcoming season. However, it is hard to anticipate some of these when the first episodes are already out. But I really had to talk about Hero Aka last week, okay? So that took precedence over basically everything else. But here we are, once again at the start of hopefully another glorious season of anime with many good options before us. Out of those, I wanted to take a few minutes to outline some of the series that I have my eye on, and perhaps some that you haven't noticed yet. So without much ado, here is my top five anime to watch this season or something. We'll workshop a better name, I, I swear. To keep up with the tradition of a top five list, I'm not going to go beyond that, despite the rather large amount of shows that end up airing every season. However, if I were to add a sixth show to this list, it would be Black Clover, which is my honorable mention. We're gonna, we're gonna go with that. Black Clover has a lot of the preseason hype behind it, the staff is mostly solid, and I can dig a new fantasy-esque anime if it ends up doing some cool shit. It's just not in the top five because I'm curious as to what the other shows offer more. I could be wrong though, it could be the best of season, like who knows, moving on. First up, Hosuki no Kuni, or Land of the Lustrous. The story summary is rather vague, and I'm curious about the director choice and what that could mean for where the show ends up going, as prior to this, he was the director of School Live and GATE. But the thing that most stands out to me is actually the PV, specifically the clips used in the show that have 3D animation, which is to say, all of it. Fully 3D anime has indeed been something that's been more and more common as of late, but I have always hesitated when talking about it because I'm still not convinced that 3D is at the point yet where it does a better job than traditional animation. And that could just be the old man talking, of course. But with recent outings like Berserk turning out like it did, I do have some examples to back up that reason. But what I really want out of a show like The Land of the Lustrous is for it to be an example of the opposite. I have been waiting for a 3D anime to come along and blow me away with either its style or presentation. And this could be it. Next up, Juni Tyson. From the original creator of the Monogatari series and the director of Future Diary comes a series that... Holy shit. This looks... This looks good. One of the advantages about the delay that it took uh, with this particular video is that the first episode of Juni Tyson is already available, and while having a 12-character Battle Royale deathmatch isn't necessarily a new concept, it's been a few years since we've gotten one, especially one that starts off this strong. What we know is that some kind of organization or such has set up a 12-combatant tournament where the winner gets one wish of their choosing, and then the tournament starts and we get to watch the fireworks! Sound familiar? Difference being this time around that the presentation of the plot is somewhat different from similar stories of the past. When those shows started off, they had a clear and very obvious protagonist to cheer for. Juni Tyson doesn't, and it hasn't yet decided which of its 12 mains will be taking the lead for the majority of the show if any of them do, which personally is extremely enticing to me. To know that no character has any kind of plot armor at all makes a battle royale of this nature far more exciting than what we have had previously. And I, for one, cannot wait for this show to continue. Girl's Last Tour is a show that I've put on this list for various reasons. One, White Fox is on a very short list of anime studios that I will watch anything from, because even if I don't necessarily like some of the stories that they have told, per se, I have yet to not be entertained in some fashion by their shows. And two, its character designs are reminding me somewhat of last season's Made in Abyss. That is, if it was crossed with Hitamari's sketch, which sounds like an odd combination, but I want to see where it goes. Also, Made in Abyss was a series that kind of ended far too soon, and has kind of left this weird void in my heart right now. So, finally having that itch of a world-building adventure series that hasn't been scratched in me in a long while. Apparently, the series follows two young girls who are traveling in some kind of post-apocalyptic wasteland just trying to survive. But because of its art style, I'm not led to believe that the series will be an utterly depressing one. 
or one that laments the consequences of war or anything like that. But it seems to just be the kind of feel-good series with two little rays of sunshine in a bleak land of despair. And honestly, I feel like that's something I need right now. Though, really, the whole itch-scratching with a world-building adventure didn't need to happen this season because we also have Kino's Journey. If you've never watched the original Kino's Journey, well, as much as I highly recommend it, and it sits somewhere as one of my favorite anime of all time, it's also one that visually hasn't aged all that well, and it might bother some people. On top of being from the era of 4x3 footage, not that that's stopping the Eureka 7 movies, am I right? It also had this weird, almost like interlaced television lines throughout. Like a really bad filter was placed there for who knows what reason. Anyway, the new series of Kino's Journey has neither of that, with increased production values, but still the same story. We haven't got any kind of confirmation that the new Kino's Journey will include any of the stories from the previous series. The original material has plenty to work with, and Kino has always been rather episodic in nature, so to have no repeating storylines from the original animation would not be that surprising. But at the same time, we have gotten no confirmation that they are not remaking things. Personally, I'm hoping for the former, as this series is only going to be billed as having 12 episodes so far. Same as last time, and honestly, I would prefer to have newer material that we haven't seen animated over stuff that's already available. Either way, I've been freaking stoked about the new Kino for a while. Almost as much as this next series. The Ancient Magus Bride. Over the past 12 months, out of any anime that I've ever been excited for, there are two that have topped the list. Firstly, after watching Violet Evergarden at Anime Expo, my hype levels for that show, when it airs next season, is... Massive. But the other is The Ancient Magus Bride. It started out as an extremely well-produced OVA series about a young girl who ends up being thrust into this world of the supernatural, but it's presented, or at least that OVA is presented, as a prequel to the story that will eventually unfold. It's been 13 months since the initial OVA episode was released, with the second of three coming out in March and the final in September, and every time I felt like screaming because I wanted more. Megas Bride is, to me, a series that I would kill to have entirely completed in front of me right now so that I can watch it all in one go. It gave me this fulfilling, adrenaline-like feeling of just watching it that only made the crash that much harder when the episode finished. But now, finally and Thankfully, we have the continuing story of Chise and the strange magician with a skeletal beast head. And oh my god, I am so ready for this, you have no idea. Any kind of description I could give of the plot would be, for the most part, pointless, because I doubt I could do it justice in such a short period of time that the OVA could not cover better. And it is still available over on Crunchyroll, so if you haven't got around to watching that three-episode OVA, now would be the perfect time. So those are the five anime of this season, six-ish, that I am going to be watching the most intently. If you think that I missed something that is worth watching, let me know down in the comments. And as always, I would like to thank my patrons for supporting these videos, because without you, they would not be possible. In particular, I would like to thank Calhoun Boy, Siri Yamiko, Victor Ekmark, Joshua Garcia, Hedro Leon, Bing Thero, and Robert Chumzai for being especially awesome. So until next time, ladies, gentlemen, and others, stay frosty.